Okay, everyone, welcome to the $5,000 trading account challenge. Can we take an account with $5,000 and buy stocks generally under $5 per share? Generally, over one dollar over 120 a dollar and 20 cents so that they're not at risk of being delisted or, or turning into junk or anything like that could we buy stocks when they are at their support and sell at the resistance can we do this over and over and turn this account with basically small cap stocks into a profitable account uh the main thing we're going to be trying to do with the account is to get away from emotional trading so that the the reason for this account is that we are looking to see if you had fifty thousand dollars a hundred and fifty thousand dollars if you can leave your day job and start trading not investing this is not putting fifty thousand dollars to work for you or one hundred and fifty thousand dollars to work for you or two hundred thousand whatever you have in terms of an investment we are looking to see if we can leave our job and take our cash our wealth and trade instead of trading labor for income if we can trade our asset our cash for income on the stock market so that basically you are taking a five thousand dollar account trying to buy cheap stocks and sell them at a profit like any form of trading that has been done throughout the world for for thousands of years this is about buying at one price selling at a higher price and living off the profit while you take the 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 initial purchase money and buy another another stock we will always set a target for where we are going to sell but if it is going in our direction and we can put in a range order somewhere under it once it's already profitable we'll do that and let it grow but this is not an investment challenge this is a trading challenge and something i'd like to add here is that we have stocks that generally move between support and resistance they move those are the stocks that we are most interested in there are stocks that for some reason were trading between that support and resistance and for some reason they come down they get depressed we're also interested in those stocks if we think that that fall is something temporary and that we can buy there and sell it either as it reaches back to the regular support or put a range order just under the regular support when it reaches back there to see if we can sell at or above the resistance when it returns to the resist to that resistance level generally if the support and the resistance is slowly trending down we still consider buying stocks at the support with the hope that even though the entire operation the entire movement is a downtrend that we can still sell on the on the the, the 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 resistance as it goes up so we can do that on a slight downtrend 
or a slight uptrend. We would also be interested in, in stocks that are on an uptrend and moving between support and resistance so that if we can buy any pullback, we can sell on the, on, on, on the high as it, as it goes up. The idea is not to look for growth stocks that are continuously moving up and to park the money there. The idea is not parking the money. The idea is trading to live off the profit. And this is a scale long version. I'm doing it with $5,000 uh, to see if somebody with 10 times the amount 15 times the amount, 20 times the amount, um, amount in real life can trade like this. We're not day trading. If we have a target and it is met within a day, fine. But if the target isn't met in a day, in two days, in two weeks, the idea is that we buy this commodity here, the stock, and we will watch the turnover time on it at the target price that we're looking for. Basically, let us say a stock has traded, and I'm keeping it simple and a kind of flat stock here. Let us say a truck had, stock had traded between a support level of 320 and the high end at 610. We're not trying to get in at six, at 320, and we're not trying to sell at 610. So that the stock is around 345 now, and we may say, okay, let's buy, let's get in now. The general, the target amount of any of these stocks for this experiment is to buy 200 shares. However, we may try to get in with 100 shares. And because this, we don't want this to be an emotional journey, we will either buy in at the price it is now, if we think it's at that point where even if it goes down a little more, it will then move back up to the resistance level. Or in some cases, like what I've started putting in some limit or limit buy orders today for, what I've done is that the stock I, I have it on a watch list it shows that it was 8% down this morning and I put a limit by for even 10% 12% lower than that in other words we're trying to mimic here what is claimed that the institutions do the institutions watch where people's stop losses are or where they're supposed to be, where they're expected to be, and go down there and put their buys. So even though I want to start the challenge today and there were quite a few stocks that were a bit depressed, I did not do uh, any market orders. I, I'm not interested in doing market orders on this challenge. Uh, market emo orders clearly shows emotions rush to get in or out so that we would only put limit orders but I don't mind putting the limit order basically the price is trading now if I want to get in but um, I will also try to get in at half the desired position size so a hundred shares below 8%, 10%, 12%, 15%, 15% below the current trading price just to see if the price would go down there and pick it up. And if it misses it, no problem. We leave it there. We leave it alone. Because in emotional trading, and I've done emotional trading, I've detraded, I've got the FOMO that, hey, you must get in this stock. It's going places. And you're buying the amount of shares that you can afford at the current price. And 10, 15 minutes after, it's 10% lower, 15% lower. Yes, it possibly then goes back in the direction you want. 
So what we're trying to do here is because we're not fighting the emotions, we're trying to get in at the best price. Uh, the next thing is lowering the average. The reason I'm not buying the full 200 shares is because if I'm, I think we're close enough to support and I buy 100 shares even a little below where we currently are or where the stock is today and we, the stock falls, I will possibly try to buy 50 shares a little lower and another 50 shares even lower than that. Uh, we're using, in some cases, we're using the Warren Buffett standard and in other cases we're doing totally opposite to this. And this is just based on my experience. We're not trying, the reason I'm at only stocks at or below $5 is that I'm not trying to, to, to buy stocks that I think are going to fall to nothing. I'm buying stocks that I think has the potential to go up. So I'm not buying what I perceive to be junk. So even though we, we, we're trading, generally, any stock under $5 that has a technical pattern, when you watch, you open the, the stock on Finviz, on, on that main chart, that is a daily chart that runs like six, eight months. This is visual technicals we, we, we're watching here. As long as this stock isn't on a dramatic down, what pattern to nowhere, to or to nothing, as long as it seems to be a stable stock that usually has some highs, and, and I'm, as I'm saying, that usually has some highs, I am tilted in this price range towards healthcare, bio, medical type stocks, uh, because on a little bit of news, those stocks usually fly high. I don't want to say that we swing trading because to fit the definition of swing trading, technically it has to be going in the opposite direction when you buy it and you have to wait for it to turn. I am either buying something that I think is a the support or is a bit depressed for some reason with the intentions of it going up or that it has bounced off the support and I think it's on the way back up already so that it is not a day trading challenge, it is not a swing trading challenge, um, it is not a fundamental trading challenge it is not an investment challenge it is just the op the opportunity we want to buy stocks at one price and sell them at a higher price the edge we will try to use at time is either that it is at the support or something um earnings wasn't that great or something and the em other people emotions has send it down and we will use that as an edge that somebody else is selling we are buying and holding to see if it will recover anything that recovers and is going in our direction as long as i do not think that it's just going to hit the resistance and come back down if i think this stock has the potential to keep going up I will put a range order with the with, with, with the stop about 20%, 20 cents below where wherever it is at that point. Let us assume that we figure the stock resistance is at 510 and it has reached 595. At, and but we bought it at three something or at four something. I'll put it, I'll put a, a, a range order from four. 80, 475, 480, we're already in profit. And even if it sells there, we're still in profit. And I, I'll, I'll then put the, the, the sell end of that range order at 625, 650. So that if 
by some chance when we're not watching it because i'm not going to sit down and watch this uh it is not a day trading challenge i don't want it to be an emotional challenge i will be able to sell for high if by some reason it bounces that high and if it goes past it we have a choice we either only put 90 or 80 percent of the holding to to sell at that ridiculous high price the range order that sticks along good until cancel so that just an event this stock goes bam to the moon we would take more profit than we plan to on 80 percent of, of the holding and then we'll still have 20 percent there to, to scale out uh basically as i mentioned scaling out the reason I'm not buying the 200 shares at one, in one shot is that I'm trying to scale in, but I'm scaling in only if the price is still falling so that I keep getting some more shares at a discounted price. Um, but if I buy 50% of the intended holding, so I buy 100 shares and the price starts to go in my direction already we're gonna just leave it we're not going to try to get the other hundred shares at a higher price than what our initial buying buy-in was we're going to leave it and try to, to to sell it at a higher price there is one exception that i've put in here and that is to the ticker amd i've traded amd for possibly the last three years I've watched even when I'm not trading AMD. I watch AMD, if not every day, nearly every day. So it's a stock that I am very familiar with. So much so that I possibly let our second challenge, trading challenge, a totally independent account, be an AMD trading, where we are trading in and out. We would trade when price is below the 200, the moving average. We're going to buy in. And when it goes over the 200 moving, simple moving average, the SMA, sorry. When it goes over the 200 SMA, we're going to sell or put range order under a profit price. And high enough that if it does some great move up, we profit even more than, than, than we speculated for. So that for today, I have put in some limit orders on stocks under $5. And I'll tell you how I came about put it, uh, using those stocks or choosing those stocks. But let me tell you what I've started and have created over the last month. The stock market if you were to go to the scanner on finviz you'd see that there's nine thousand something stocks readily available listed for purchase um i went to the scanner and i used one parameter the only thing i did was stocks under five dollars when I put in that, it dropped it to possibly, I can't remember now, possibly six or 800 stocks. And I then put on the overview selection where on each page, I'll get about eight or 10 of the stock charts for the last six, eight months. I can't remember exactly how many months Finfish show you. And to the right-hand side of it, there's a little overview i would watch each stock so i've gone through if it was 500 800 whatever it is i've watched through every page doing quick technical analysis i'm just watching the chart and if the chart looked like something stable enough but with good distance good movement between support and resistance i saved that particular ticker so that I broke it down from 800, 500, whatever was the initial, to possibly 300 tickers. With those 300 tickers, I then went into the Finviz page for that stock. 
And what I did is look up the news items down below, look up the history of what is going on with this stuff. Any stuff that has legal matters pending and bankruptcy and uh, upcoming and all of those things, I stayed away from it. Because basically, some of those stocks of people who are penny stock traders actually produce a lot of income. But it's also very unstable, very unpredictable, very volatile. So I've stayed away from that to more stocks that are trading in a range. So the reason I have also included AMD and I possibly just going to trade AMD in and out a few times and see what the trades are is because I've traded in and out of AMD. I'm accustomed with the movement of AMD and it is the pattern, the trading pattern which, which I've used and followed with AMD is what I'm using and following for these other smaller stocks. So after getting the stocks down to about 150 stocks that were under $5. Uh, they were all above $1, $1.20 kind of thing. Most of them seemed to be in the $3 to $4 range. Some of them in the, in the 2 something. But the majority of them, possibly 70-80% of, of them, are in that $3 to $4.80, $4.50 range. What I then did is I went to StockTwits on the on one account and my personal account and entered all 150 stocks on my watch on a watch list. The reason I did that is so that on a daily basis I can see which of them are up and which of them are, are down which has the highest loss for the day is triggering my interest at this point because I want to buy in at the best price. I want to see if something has caused the stock to go down. And if something has caused the stock to go down and I go and check the news and I, I, I do some research, some fundamental research, and it doesn't seem to me like anything that is going to cause this particular ticker to crash, I am going to put in a limit order to buy at or around that price. So if I think it's going to go down more lower, or if I want to let it stabilize a little bit and then buy at what I think is the, the first sight of a green day or so. And that is how I, what the metric I'm basically using for buying. For selling, I'm using the same amount of of tick, of tickers saved on the watch list. However, I have a watch list created on StockTwits, especially for this challenge. It's the Skyman Can Do account on StockTwits, where I will only enter onto that watch list stocks that we have purchased, so that on any given morning I can take my phone, flip out of my regular stock with account, go to the Skyman can do account and see whether the stocks that we have purchased are up a bit or down a bit. I'm going to try to post the balance every day or I shouldn't say every day, I possibly will update once to twice a week at best and I'll show the balance of the account whether $5,000 has become $5,500 or whether $5,000 has become $3,500. Whatever it is, at least at least once a week, I will post it. I will post whatever positions we have entered or whatever positions we have limit orders for. So whatever stock I see that I put a limit order for, I will put it there. The idea is not to turn $5,000 into $3 million. This is not a guru challenge. This is nothing like that. 
as I said, this is to see if we can take $5,000, trade a limited amount of stocks, not in any, not overweighing in any one stock, to see if that we can keep taking profit off of the stocks that have increased so that we can make a living if we were to do it on a bigger scale doing this. The number one cause of failure that I have seen, that I have experienced in your account is emotion. So if you notice, I have not followed any momentum. These are stocks that are possibly at times trading below their, their average volume or stocks that are not up on volume. I am particularly not going behind momentum on this challenge. Another great challenge in the future would be a momentum challenge. But momentum triggers emotion and emotion triggers FOMO. And you get the fear of missing out and you jump in at a price that is too high and then it goes the other way and you jump out because you're now losing money that you, you didn't plan to lose. So that the challenge has attempted, this challenge is my attempt to remove the number one cause of loss of money in your account, which I think is emotion. So that we're buying in at a price that could be a boring price. We're willing to average in a lower price, a more boring price, and wait and see if the stock gets profitable. And I, I'm not saying swing because it could be, as I said, somewhere where it is already. We're going to buy at one price and sell at a higher price. I remember there was a country boy on... YouTube that said he made a lot of money trading and he did it doing one thing. He said, I bought low and I, I sell high and everybody says that, but nobody does it. And he was very, very simple. I don't know if I could find the link. If I find the link, that was years ago. He said, so what I've been doing is consistently every week buying stocks that I found the price had gone down and possibly would recover. And then whenever they recover, he was selling them higher, which to me is not buying a stock that is doing well. It's not buying a stock that the, the, the buyers have rushed in, and, rushed in and already sent it 20% and you're now trying to get in on top of it. We possibly buying stocks that were down 20% and is now coming back. Um, one of the things I like for this challenge is I like to watch first green day. When you had a stock that was tra trading in a, in a nice range, for some reason, it has five red days, three, four, five, six, seven, ten red days, whatever. And you realize it starts to stable out. If it's just five red days, um, by the first green day, I'm interested in it. If it's like ten red days, I usually want to watch the second day, the third day that is starting to, to stabilize. To, to show green, green, red, but no big thing, and then green again. And I'm interested in, in those stocks. So the idea with the whole challenge is to remove the emotional decisions in the trading account to try and be profitable. And I'm saying this, um, don't take it, don't take it the wrong way. The, we also trying to prove that any stock, any purchase could be a viable one. If there's not the emotion in it, any purchase can either go up or down. And as long as we don't take one that is weighted too heavily down, uh, but we think it's a close to support that any stock, any purchase is 50, 50. And there is a chance that if you spend the time in the market, that you can be profitable. 
So we're using those two things that I raised, the two points that I raised in another video. We are trying to time the market, not to be the exact bottom, but we're trying to time it. We're trying to time an entry that is around support. And we're trying to, to profit by the time in the market, by the time we spend in the market. So even if it goes down a little more, we're not rushing to sell. We're hoping to get as it recovers. I'm going to just come to the, to the stocks that I've watched today. And we'll see if we can find the, the ones that we put in orders for. Okay, so a few orders here. A-C-E-R. It was trading today down a few cents at $2.42. I put in a limit order for 100 shares at $2.38. A-D-M-E. Was trading this morning at $1.46. Put in a limit order for a dollar and 38 cents, a hundred years. AMS was trading this morning for two dollars and 85 cents. Put in a limit order for a hundred years at two dollars and 80 cents. BBIG was trading at 324. I put in a order for a hundred years at 310. I also put in a hundred shares, an order for a hundred shares at three ten for FBIO, which was trading at three eighteen this morning, and a hundred shares of FPAY for two dollars and twenty cents that was trading at two forty this morning. Along with that, I put in an order for just 20 shares because we, we're not trying to strain the account. We're just trying to show that we can buy and sell and be profitable. I put in a order for 20 shares of AMD at 20, at, sorry, at $87 and 20 cents while it was trading at $87 and I think 56 cents this morning. Uh, it came down and filled. Um, it then went down possibly to 8.10 to 87.10. I've put in a sell order at $88.87. And a while ago, it was trading. Those 20 shares were $6.50 in profit. It possibly moving in and out of that. Um, I have always traded AMD. Because when it was at $11 and $16, I was always of the impression that this stock is going higher. If I buy 20 shares or 2,000 shares in another account of AMD at $87 and it drops to $67, because it is my long term, this is the, the, the kind of more fundamental side of, of of my trading here because it is a long-term investment i believe this tickle is going to go up i am holding on to it this is our warren buffett ideology when it comes to amd when it comes to ford ford is another one that i'm i'm willing to trade when it's, it's a bit depressed and hold without putting a, a stop loss on it because it's a how I will consider it is like a portfolio stock. It's a stock that I could be in long term. And unless I have so much of it that I, I need to sell off 80% if it goes under another a, a particular price, um, I'll do that in my bigger account. But I'll also put back a buy in so that if I was, if I had 2000 shares of, of, of AMD, that I purchased at $87, I may put a sell at 
seventy-eight dollars or seventy-five dollars or something, if so that if it tanked for some reason, but I'd be right there with with limit orders to buy back in lower down. And I've I've been profitable in strange enough crypto using basically that theory. Everybody is in the crypto to make a million dollars. I just watch crypto as something that goes up and down and anything that goes up and down, I can trade. And when Dogecoin took off at six cents, my son was in it at six cents. I didn't get to, to set up a, a Binance account at the time. So I eventually set up the account by the time I set it up. It was up to 32 or 33 cents and I wanted to get in. Same thing, not FOMO. I didn't go and buy all the, that I think I could buy. I bought about a third of what I had the potential of buying at that price at the 30 something cents and it retract. And I had limit orders all the way down to 10 cents should it fall. And it came right back down to 16 cents. I ended up with possibly three times the amount of shares that I initially got in at the 30 something cents. And then I held it and when it reached 71 cents, which was very close to the high, I sold like 90% of it or 80% of it, can't remember now, at a profit. And when it came back down into the 30 cents range, I think 29 cents or 33 cents or something, I bought again. I just bought with the out of money that is profit and it's still there. It's still there. It's gone down now, but it, it's depressed. And I'm not buying more because I don't think it's stable. I don't think it's really a point to invest in it. I've taken my profit out of it. Actually, that profit has come into this challenge. And we'll see how it goes. So that stick with me. I would like your support. I'd like your comments. Um, I'd like to do trading challenges to show that um, basically at some point in life, we have to stop physically working and let the money that we have made, the assets that we had made, has made, work for us. And after running and having successful businesses for most of my life, at some point I realized, hey, you know, the workers won't be there forever. And I'm not physically able to do what I was able to do when I was 80 pounds lighter, 10 years younger. And about 10 or 12 years ago, my focus went on to how do I get my money to work for me? And instead of building, just building businesses where I invest and work and have people work with me on it, I got involved and I took courses, finance courses and, and trading courses and stock courses on with the intent of being able to have my money work for me. And I've gone the way of the of the guru. I remember being in contact with Timothy Sykes once directly and my experience has taught me that if you can take $5,000 and turn it into $300,000 in three months or six months, you possibly won in a in, in, in a hundred million people or hundred million traders. And what I'm trying here is not to build that expectation in myself or in anybody else. What I'm trying here is to see compared to the market, if you can invest money and by working the money buying and selling just like you would do apples or grapes or oranges or mangoes. If you can buy and sell, if you can generate income off of the money that you have invested. Um, like everybody else who gets into trading, and I, I, I say it's part of the journey. I had to go through it to get where I am now. Is um, I started doing the, the courses and the fastest way to learn to trade is in Forex. So I learned about stock. I learned about 
fundamental analysis. I learned about technical an analysis. But the fastest way to get my feet wet 10, 12 years ago, whatever it was, was to trade Forex. And I got into Forex and boy, did I learn how to trade things that move up and down. Because it happens 24 hours a day, six days a week or something like that. And you can get the hang of trading the fastest, I think, in Forex. Maybe crypto is there with it now, but um, crypto wasn't in that uh, sphere, sphere at the time. So I did that and then moved to day trading. And um, I'll admit, when you get into something new, you see all these things that somebody taking $30,000 and changing it to a million dollars and whatever. So that becomes your expectation. So you're going in there, especially if you run a demo account first. I could take any demo account. I can take a demo account today with $10,000 and I can turn it into $100,000 within three months. That is no problem with a demo account. And even though I act with my demo accounts when I used to do them as if it's money and it will keep me up in the night what is happening and all of that, the reality is the pain of cash, the attachment to cash, or the real cash that we have, the minute we put our wire transfer into an account, the, the pain of losing and that willingness to take what you just got is totally different from a cash account to a paper trading account. So that the expectation of the gurus that when I went in, it, initially it was, okay, day trading, wait, I'm going to do this full time at $30,000, $40,000, and, and I will multiply. The interest is no longer there. My interest is to take any size account to use possibly two thirds of the cash in it to trade in and out and try to generate profit. And I say two thirds of the, the, the cash because again, I'm going to have a little bit of Berkshire Hathaway, Charlie Munger, Warren Buffett thinking here. I always want to have enough cash in the account even though this is a five thousand dollars account we are keeping enough cash in it that should something like what happened to boeing with the plane crashes happen and something fall drastically based on emotion that we have some money available in the account account to to grab up some um something i must say is this account has six to one leverage on it during daylight hours, during trading hours, sorry. And it has one to one leverage on it overnight. My intention is to use no leverage. As I said, my attention, uh, intention is to use just about two thirds of the account cash value to buy stocks, hold them and sell them back at a, back at a profit. And the rest of the cash basically would be to buy more of particularly any stock that we are already involved in that has some drastic dip that we think would be temporary help me in this uh give me advice where i need it where i, I may be off the ball or i have a habit of asking for advice or not taking it it doesn't mean that I don't care about what you say or what you think. Um, I think when someone has an idea of how they are trading or how they're going to build a fence in front of the house or anything, and they ask you for ideas, sometimes it's to see if you are on the same track with them, if you support what they're doing. And sometimes it's that if you are totally opposed or take a different approach, that they can either adapt your approach or in, in, in some cases, eliminate your approach and say, okay, this is another approach, but
But that is not the one I'm taking. I'm sticking with the one that is my plan. This is a learning process. Um, this is the first time I'm doing a trading account as a challenge. It's the first time I am going to totally have to remove my personal emotions from the account because I am trying to do it by a rule, a set of rules that I put in here, which I will possibly, from video to video, I'll read out some, each update, I'll read out some of the rules. I've said a few that I can remember off the top of my head here today. And stick with me, help me, support me, and hopefully in return, this challenge could support you if you are a new trader, a trader that has been washing out because you, you put money into the market and then you get emotionally involved, which is to me the number one reason, and you take bad trades or, 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 or greedy trades or, or you follow something after it's out of the ban. See if you can, if this will help you, if you could watch, you might be able to watch some of my mistakes here or you could watch some of this stuff that I'm doing right and try to, to, to follow or to communicate and let us make this a, a great challenge. Is um, I'd like that if the account is profitable, whether it's 10%, 20% over whatever time, I'm not putting a fixed uh, time frame to double the account or, some, or anything. I'd like to see if we could double it, whether it's in five months or 25 months, whatever it takes to, to keep it healthy, to keep the account healthy and to grow it. And then to take possibly $5,000 or $500 profit out of it is like if you make significant gains here, it would be nice to take $500, put it into a new account and set up a trading challenge for stocks under $1. And I can trade stocks under $1. I've done it quite successfully overnight and lose back the gains the next day so that we could set up a, an account, a $500 or $1,000 account to trade stocks, just penny stocks under $1. And I could put the rules in place that has caused that to prevent what caused me in the past that when I trade penny stocks, I do well in the after hour and pre-market with them. I know how to, to find them. And but anytime I'd be up significant percentages overnight into the into, into the morning before the, the market opens, and then generally what I used to do is lose back that money. So that if I can write the code, so to speak, to only hold on to the part of it that was profitable and we create rules so that we don't do the other part, that will be great. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching. Thanks if you stayed with me this long. Um, you can follow some of my other videos. I think it's there. If it's not there, it's there. Um, help give me ideas i always have trading stuff that i want to do give me ideas what you'd like to see what i can put out and let's build a, a, a financial channel where we can look at all different walks of life of in investing working being profitable um i have built businesses i have been successful very successful in businesses, I've had the big yacht, the sports cars, the luxury cars from my work, from my business. Um, so I am a person who has been successful trading. I'm not successful because of trading, but I've been able to build very successful businesses that have done business throughout. Like in my case, the Caribbean, I've gone international doing business, doing projects uh, so that I've had that experience. I've gathered wealth and income from that and i'm now trying over the last 12 years to, to change some of that type of business to trading and all different types of walks of life in becoming profitable not everybody would be able to trade some of us would just need to set up a business and i can 
show you how much I've done at least seven successful businesses and there's some requirements that we all need and once you follow them you become successful you can make your business successful so whatever it takes is all about skyman can do we all can do stick with me and i'll stick with you thank you very much for viewing god bless as you can see my content is my opinion on current affairs news articles or professional papers and documents which are found in the public domain thank you look forward to seeing you on the channel with me